My name is Havanika Black. Um, I am a member of the Outhouse of Stool. Uh, I am a drag queen in Chicago. I am a black person, I'm a trans person. I am a writer. I have two degrees, uh, political science and psychology, and my minors are both in writing. My journey with drag, um, I think is similar and in the same vein to that of like a lot of drag queens around my age group or that have started drag recently in the same amount of years as me, which is like that drag is not at the height of its exposure. Uh, RuPaul's Drag Race is um, one of the most marketable things on TV right now. It is now like sitting at like 13 Emmys, I think, which is kind of insane. Um, and I was 16 years old and I found drag um, through Drag Race on Hulu. I remember thinking that it was spectacular. I remember thinking that it, I had never seen anything like it. Drag was the first time I ever saw somebody that like, people who looked like me and were the same as me, like doing things that I enjoyed. Um, and while the representation was not like completely perfect, it was representation. And I had never really had that before. Um, and it also like, gave me a lot of safety and security. Like it was also a lot of people who had gone through what I was going through, like soft negative responses to your queerness, like parents not really coming around. My mom really came around eventually, but my dad is like a homophobic person, like is a transphobic person, like is a very anti-queer in my opinion. Um, and I found that like, it made it a, a lot easier to like deal with those things because I was seeing people who were at like the height of their artistic selves on TV, getting to showcase it to the world. And they had been like, I was literally just here like eight years ago. So like, it can happen for anybody. It can, it can truly like, drag can turn those things around. It can save you from those things. In a world where I feel like my people are being radically attacked and no one seems to really care, it is like radical celebration. I think that's a really interesting, cool thing that is pretty unique to queer people. I also didn't even look at drag as an attachment to my queerness or my own experience. I just think that it, I just think that it is objectively cool. Like I think there's something really special about drag, something really um, magnetic about drag that like kind of sucks people in, like they can't help themselves almost. Like if a drag queen tells you to clap two times, you're gonna clap two times for some reason. Like there just is this power that drag has. It kind of grabs everybody. I like stole a whole bunch of makeup for my theater department at high school and like stowed away in my room in like the late hours of the night and like would like put myself in drag and I never took pictures of it because I was always really ashamed of the work that I did I was like I never was like Ugh, I look amazing and I feel like that is something that drag queens love doing is looking amazing I was like I don't want to feel delusional so I just like <clears throat> kept it at bay and I just like recommitted during the pandemic um i was maybe also like literally 16 at that time um and i just felt like that's five years out from 21 it's a long time not going to do drag in the clubs and i was like i just don't have the commitment level or the money or honestly like the safety and the room to, to express myself that way like within the four walls of my own home so i was like i'll just wait and i did wait and i lived on my own in the pandemic through that time remained a very strong fan of drag advocated for drag like to be in my school shows like um we did a couple of shows that year where like i designed the makeup for them and a part of that makeup was like it being drag makeup um and so yeah just like continued to like flex the drag muscle as it made sense and then like around the time of the pandemic i just like finally settled down i chose a name i picked Helvetica Black because I watched the Helvetica documentary. Uh, there's a documentary on the font Helvetica. And there's something to the point that like, the font Helvetica in the color black on white paper is almost perfect. Perfect. It's like, it's a font you almost don't see. Cause like, it just, the mind just absorbs it. It's like, it's, it, it's an instant infatuation. It's like an instant love. And like, um, it just feels right. And I thought that, that was like a great, thing to bring into my drag is that I just like feel right to people. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with like standard things. Standard things are typically very, very good, so either the standard. Um, and Helvetica in the font world was like literally making like a wave, like they made a documentary about it. I thought it was really, really cool. And then I just dropped the C from Helvetica and added an H on the end because I like a full circle. And also I hate the letter C. I grew up in 
uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa for 14 years. I was born and raised there. And then at the age of 14, I moved to Waco, Texas. Um, and so I did drag in a place with almost no drag. Like, Iowa is not oversaturated with drag queens. Like, it's not a thing. And then I moved to Texas and found drag in Texas. And drag in Texas is quite specific. Um, it's a lot of pageantry. It's like buckers and dancers and like big wigs and sparkly gaudy outfits. And it, that is my favorite kind of drag to watch without a, like a shadow of a doubt. I love drag queens like that. But also like I think what I have found the most about Chicago in particular, because I knew that I always wanted to do drag here, is that a lot of the people who live here and do drag, I find to like be people who are like, as much as I love, respect, and admire the drag where I came from, it was not a place I could do drag. And so I feel like I also kind of agree to that vein. Like, I don't think that I would have accomplished what I've accomplished in this last year. I don't think I'd be able to do it, like, in a city like Austin or Houston. Like, I just don't think that I'd be able to do it. Um, and so I feel very happy and privileged and lucky to, like, be doing drag in a city like this. This is the city with the best drag in it. And so I feel like akin to that because I think very highly of myself and I also feel like that is the biggest influence in my drag I feel like is that like I find the city to be the best at drag and it influences me to be better and I try to make that the only way that outside drag that is not my own influences my own work. Drag is really personal I feel like maintaining the integrity of like things being personal is a really hard thing to do in drag because it's all drag is also pop culture and pop culture shifts and it changes and you have to do what's new and relevant and fresh and the best drag queens my favorite drag queens the drag queens that stand out the most to me are the drag queens who somehow navigate all of those things while remaining very true to themselves um and those are also all the drag queens that i have learned without a doubt the most from as well sometimes i hate drag queens like sometimes i'm like this is a bad number but I live just because it's drag. Like, drag queens are literally braver than the troops. Like, I don't care. Like, to be, like, freshly 21, to, like, put a wig on and put on makeup that you can't really execute. And to, like, I don't know. Like, I do jump splits and corsets and they shoot guns. And I just feel like jump splits and corsets are harder. I've shot guns before. Pretty easy to pull a trigger. Um, I think we prove all the time in America that's really easy to pull a trigger. And, like, it's so hard to be queer in America. It's so hard to be... A queer person that does drag and I feel like um there just is like this insurmountable amount of bravery that I just really respect drag for having what makes my drag unique um hmm this is a very interesting question um it's like a question you get a lot as a drag queen I kind of hate answering it only because like no drag queen is actually that special Drag is incredibly incestuous. We, like, eat our own tail a lot. Queer people spend their entire life feeling like the other, and then to, like, get in a space full of people just like you, and then to be, like, I am the most unique, I am the most different, just kind of defeats the entire purpose of, like, drag community, in my opinion. And so it's, like, I don't know, maybe just focus on, like, being good to those people, being good at your job, being good at what you do, and, like, shining. The best advice I've ever gotten ever gotten was for my drag mom and she told me she was like Helvetica nobody in drag is reinventing the wheel because wheels are round for a reason that's how things roll and she was like all you have to do is figure out how to get all four wheels rolling and you will be the best drag queen to everybody who sees you and so it's not about uniqueness and it's not about difference it's about um like station and it's about like consistency and it's about like work ethic and hard work and so I feel like um what makes me unique maybe like amongst my peers is that like in a year in time I like went from like being a baby queen who won a competition to being like a co-producer of a very very popular competition in Chicago producing my own show with my drag sister Ari um a trusted member of my community community is truly all we have like I'm not realizing that like the the U.S. government is, isn't even on my side so which I'm not shocked because come on but I also am like wow it really is all about community so I sometimes I'm like what where does the uniqueness come from where does the perspective come from I find myself to like be a genuinely community oriented person my drag family is like they are spectacular people all in their own right they are some of like the kindest, most warm hearted people that I know. Um, like when we have family days together and Lucy like orders in food and we like get old drag from her. It was like experiencing 
family things that I felt like I had always missed out on with my real family in a weird way. Like, I just know that in a way with those people I am, and as much as they love me, I also, like, do know that, like, I just lie on the outside a little bit. They want a lot of explanation for who I am, and I feel like, um, for, like, the people in the stool family to, like, not know me my entire life and also expect no explanation for who I am, um, is, like, really powerful. Like, I can't tell you how many times Ari has just been like, that's just kind of who you are, though, so, like, who cares? Like, and I think that, like, that is, like, a really powerful and affirming way to like get to walk through life and so i really love my drag family so my drag mom is lucy sewell um who is also like the mother of chicago um lucy is like she's like a parade float like her drag is insane like sometimes she's like actually like she's like in berlin like standing in a beer puddle and i'm like you're wearing like something that costs like three thousand dollars and she's like well yeah of course she is like divinely special i believe like i feel like there's like a reason that like these things have been placed on her um opportunity and timing and like um uh, having a standing in her drag community has also offered her these things but i also feel like sometimes i go to gigs with lucy i mean like you all heard her host last night who else's voice can fill that room that way like, it's, like, powerful to hear her speak sometimes. In that family, I also got an older brother, uh, Love Me Stool. I also got an older sister, Rachel Slurs Stool. And then my eldest sister is Ariana Elgato. Um, no stool. Um, and, yeah, I was blessed with some of the most, like, incredible people I've ever met in my entire life. No one makes me, like, laugh like Rachel no one checks up on me like love i thought i knew what it meant to be seen and then i met ari and i realized what it actually means to like be seen as a human being who like navigates life ari is like my confidant that is my other half i have never met somebody as specific as me um it's the autism <laughs> when i got adopted by lucy lucy is a very busy lady she works a lot she's a lot of gigs and Ari just kind of took it upon herself to, like, mentor and, like, big sister mother me in a way that, like, she didn't have to. Like, we could be casual friends who are drag sisters. That is a common thing in Chicago. Like, people having drag family and, like, not really knowing each other. Um, and Ari, like, was front row at all of my shows and, like, supported me no matter what. And, like, always gave me advice when I asked for it. And also knows exactly when to give me advice when I'm not asking for it. Ari did a number <laughs> where she was Harriet Tubman. Um, you know, he said that she wasn't Harriet Tubman, she was Sherriet Tubman. So she was like Cher and Harriet Tubman. And she performed Gimme, 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 A Man After Midnight, but it was Gimme, 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 Your Slaves. <laughs> so I can lead them to freedom. And then she did Believe, which is famous, like, do you believe in life after love? But she would ask the audience, do you believe that slaves deserve to be free? And everybody like answered yes. And then she like tricked the last guy into saying no. And <laughs> the audience like erupted with laughter. And then she like grabbed my hand. She's trying to like grab black people out of the audience and like lead them to freedom. And everybody was like shaking her hand off and she grabbed my arm. And we like ran in a circle three times around the audience and then we like let off the stage and we were laughing so hard we like rolled on the ground together like laughing and i feel like it's like um it's one of my memories where i'm like i could never i don't think i'll ever forget it because it was also one of our one of our first times where i was like oh my god we're like sisters um and so yeah very very special moment for me and also just like when the host was like y'all put your hands together for sharing it tubman i was like this is crazy <laughs> Um, but that's Chicago drag, like, crazy shit, like, that happens, like, on a rant, that's, like, on a, that was on a Monday. Like, sometimes shit, like, that happens to me on a Monday, and I'm, like, that's crazy, because it's literally Monday. <laughs> there is, um, a myriad of t the type of artists that you find in Chicago, and so there's a plethora of different drag queens. And then I think that, like, as a city, it is just as segregated and gross as the rest of the Midwest. It's really no different. It just is pretty. 
and there just like is opportunity here and there's art here and there's love here i like ran from texas and i feel like i like hit the drag scene like jumped up in the air and like my community caught me and i feel like it has been a very rewarding experience for me and it's changed my life and it's also like saved my life but I also know, like, I would feel that love and happiness for my community even if I wasn't putting on a wig and a dress. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't just the drag. It's just the fact that, like, there are good people in this city. And there are good people everywhere. Like, there are good people everywhere because there are queer people everywhere. And I feel like queer people are, like, there is a goodness that, like, runs through us. And so, like... Just because you want to be a drag queen doesn't mean you ever have to leave your bedroom. And just because you want to be a drag queen doesn't mean you have to perform in front of people. I just think it means that, like, you need to express yourself in that way. And I would never tell any queer person to not express themselves. So I would just say express yourself. I would also say note your safety first before you start expressing yourself. Like, I really hate to say it, but, like, staying in the closet saves lives. Um, it also takes them. So you have to know how to weigh that for yourself and you have to like be knowledgeable of that. But I also think that like, if you have somewhere to run and you're scared, it's okay to run to other people, to different communities, to like other people that you love besides what you've always known. There will be people there waiting for you with open, open arms. I would say find community. And I would say like within the safety of whatever makes sense for you in that moment the most, to like do what you need to do. I thought to waiting until 3 a.m. to like put on lashes and try to attempt to glue on your eyebrow and look a hot fucking mess for like three years. Girl, you do it. I'll be in the comments saying, sister, heart emoji. I really do believe in like uplifting queer children and like I was a queer kid who like for like a whole year of my life felt very unloved and like not seen and celebrated and I feel like they're like, it sounds so cliche and stupid to say, but like, it just gets better. The only thing that's stopping you is the fact that like, you're 14 in Iowa. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, sometimes it's like, sometimes it's terrible. And if obviously we're talking like abuse and stuff, like seek help, leave, do what you have to do. But if we're talking like, you just aren't ready to come out, like the standard, you know, like that's what we're talking about. I don't know. I just would say like, Bide your time and wait and leave. Just don't be afraid to leave and to find. And even if it literally means like, I'm leaving Decorah and I'm going to Des Moines. Like, even if that's your escape, escape, leave. Putting three hours between you and what you think is stopping you is an, um, it, it is immensely helpful. My favorite thing about Chicago is I can just walk down the street and be whoever I want to be, whatever I want to be, and never face the judgments that scared me to be those things. A very big part of my queerness and how it manifests in Chicago is that I explain basically nothing about my identity to anybody. Like, I just, like, am Helvetica, and I also just, like, am Amelia Dion. Like, I just am both of those people simultaneously and separately to a lot of people. And I feel like I don't owe anybody an explanation and nobody asks. And I feel like Every time that I have a complaint with my family about, like, how my queerness is handled, they're like, well, you don't talk to anybody about it. I'm like, well, I should not have to. You want an explanation, and I don't have one. And so, like, when I tell the baby people in my family, like, I have anxiety about coming back, and it stresses me out to go back. Also, just, like, girl, I'm going to break out because the water there is weird. Like, I'm, like, so I'm also stressed about that, you know what I mean? But, like, on top of that, I'm, like... I just kind of, like, I, these are things about myself that I don't care to explain. Like, I love that here when I talk to people about my queerness, I, I can just kind of be like, I just am this. And people are like, okay. Because it's none of their business. And I feel like anything that is not the norm in a place like Iowa, it needs to be explained. It needs to be like, like, Why? how what like is are just questions that are like consistently thrown at you for no fucking reason other than the fact that like people in that state on the, like in like a large capacity obviously not everybody but like in a large capacity do not have the um the range of experience or like the empathy to like 
extend anything that is understanding to people who are not almost just like them and experience life just like them. Um, and it's crazy that like they will also miss out on some people because something like queerness stands in their way. Also, I mean like Iowa is great. I loved it for a long time in my life, but like in Iowa being ran by Kim Riddle, it's in Iowa I'm not really into, quite frankly. She like just signed something in Iowa that makes trans kids have to detransition, have to like step outside of their transition because she, she and the parent and parents who are not the parents of the children that we are talking about find it to be unfit. First off, that seems like vehemently un-American to me to like infringe on somebody else's like literally like pursuit of happiness, but I don't know, I'm not like George Washington or anything, but like I've read the Declaration of Independence, I've read the Bill of Rights, you know what I mean? Like, we the fucking people. The I am also we. It makes me like hyper aware of people who like do, who I know watch these things and know about these types of things and are not saying anything, despite knowing me even, but even like by blood or personally or whatever, like knowing that I work in drag, knowing that like that is how I make like half of my living. Um, and spend my time and like build a community with people underneath and I just feel like it's <sighs> I find the lack of response to be pathetic I find people who are not responding out loud right now to be like pathetic people and if you're like on the fence about like defending queer people about all of what's going on right now like, I don't know, grow a pair, be a responsible member of society, stand up for what matters and if you don't have the balls to do it like I hope that like if this turns around and gets flipped and we start finally getting to go after people who have always gone after us and the people who are doing this right now are punished to the highest extent of the law, I really hope you are also there to, to suffer with them. Because to, like to stand by and be complicit is like indifference is so much worse than hate. Like this is like the worst time in history to be indifferent about queer people. It, like you should be speaking every day about it quite frankly. If you are queer in any capacity, if you know queer people in any capacity, if you've like seen one drag show and like had a good time, this is your time to speak now and be like, hey, these people are not bad people. Because I'm telling you that like, I don't even walk through Chicago with the same confidence that I used to literally six weeks ago because America has changed so drastically for queer people in the last six weeks of being here. If people, who aren't like drag queens, can't recognize that they need drag queens for change. It is not on the backs of drag queens to make them know. Um, and so like, if drag became a subculture again and like, it was cut off from the outside world, I think it also would thrive in ways that hasn't thrived in a very long time. Because there is a microscope on us all of the time right now, magnifying glass rather. But like, it is on us all the time right now, specifically right now. Um, I'm not gonna like hash out what's going on in the United States of America because like if you're not paying attention like you're kind of stupid but like kids are getting shot in schools and people are getting shot up in public places and Republicans are like deflecting by blaming drag queens. 103 youth pastors last year were arrested for child pedophilia. That's crazy that like, dra like, that, like my friends are scared to like do story hour now because like they don't want to face like conservatives. At some point, is it worth all the fighting or is it just worth like to have what is yours and to celebrate it with the people who know what it is? And I think that like, I don't know, I would prefer the latter quite frankly. Like if you had asked me to do this yesterday, I would have told you no. If it, if it was like, if this was like, if this entire experience was like more centered around like what's happening with drag and like the social eye right now, I like would have been like, I'm actually like not comfortable discussing that because I just feel like I get on the internet every day and like people who do what I do are being called like groomers and pedophiles and monsters and evil people and like people who like and that we are like bad and evil and like tarnished and terrible and I'm like that's crazy because like Mitch McConnell's right there you know <laughs> like and like I mean okay happy indictment day shout out yesterday but like Trump's right there, like, and Catholic priests are right there. And I just, I, I feel like it, it just is so weird. Like, I'm sorry, Lucy was dressed as Shrek yesterday. Tell me a kid that wouldn't love that. You know what I mean? It's like, tell me a kid that would not love that. 
And then also it's like, and then tell me what about that performance was like inappropriate for even a child to witness. Like, tell me anything about, maybe with the exception of Derry's second number. <laughs> like, tell me anything that was like, that a child could not see at that drag show. And also not to mention Mrs. Doubtfire, Medea, Big Mama's House, any episode of a cartoon where they dress up as a fucking girl and they're a boy character, like that is all drag. You have like digested it and seen it your entire life. It is literally no different. And I would also like to say that like, there are things in Mrs. Doubtfire that are more sexually explicit than anything I've ever done in my entire drag career and I've like dommed people on stage. I hardly see drag where I'm like, whoa, a kid could not see that, you know? It's exhausting. Like, it makes drag so tiring right now. Like, that like, I don't know. I could just walk out of a gig one day and somebody could be like throwing bricks and being like, you're all going to hell for grooming children. And I'm like, their parents brought them. <laughs> like their parents literally brought them. They're like, there's kids over there. And I'm like next to their mothers and fathers who brought them to this gig, who handed them ones and said, give it to her. Like, it just, it is so ridiculous to me. It is so petty. And it is like, I'm gonna look directly into the camera for this one. Make no mistake, this is what Hitler did to Jewish people. This is what he did in the early stages of the Holocaust. This is what he did to queer people. He attacked trans people first. He pushed them out. He made them outliers within their own community. And then the minute that the community folded on them, he turned the guns on the rest of the community. This is a ploy. They have not been quiet about it. They have not been secretive about it. Republicans and conservatives and alt-right people are after queer people. They want us to die, they think that we are scum, and they want us to like not be a part of society anymore. It's scary. And it like... It makes everything kind of feel a little bleak. You're like, ugh, kind of, you know? I don't know, I haven't taken public transit and drag in a long time because I've been like worried about it all. And even in Ubers, I'm like, am I gonna have to shake my Uber driver from the back? Like, am I gonna have to defend myself? I have drag queen friends who have, like, had to, like, get out of the car and, like, walk the rest of the way to their gig because they're, like, in a car where someone's, like, they get in the car and they, like, switch from, like, regular radio to Christian radio and, like, blast it at the top of, the, like, the, like, as loud as they can. I, like, did a brunch and there were kids who wanted a picture with the drag queens and some of my friends were, like, I refuse to be a Facebook post. The bitches were, like, I'll give you $20 for a picture with my kid. I made, like, like $300 after that drag show because people were like, here's 20 bucks, thank you for the meet and greet. Watch some of like my most, some of the drag queens I respect the most, like flee and be like, I can't do this because they're fear they're scared. They're like terrified. We had a drag queen here named Holly Hazmat who like got threatened by like alt right people that they are gonna like show up and hurt her. I remember being like, this is the worst it's gonna get. It's never gonna get worse than this. Like, I think we're gonna like move out of this. And then it died down for like six months. And then all of a sudden, bang, bang, bang at a fucking middle school. And then the drag queen who performed six hours later at a gay club, six, like 60 miles away is like the villain for some reason. I'm like, I just don't understand. Like, the, like America's like trying to clean up other people's messes. And I'm like, people are getting killed in record number by guns. And we're talking about drag queens right now. What's going on? What is going on? I'm genuinely asking. What is actually going on? Because it genuinely feels like people are like, hey, gun violence is a problem. And Republicans were like, hmm. Okay, so like, okay, 300 people were killed in the last like three months, okay? Okay, okay, okay. But have you considered drag queens? <laughs> like that's literally what it feels like. That's literally what it feels like to be a drag queen right now. Is that somebody was like, hey, record numbers of gun death. And somebody in Texas was like. But have you considered drag queens? And, and half of the nation is like, wait. What we did today, like when we went to the wig shop and stuff, like that is what drag queens do. We like do that together. We like smoke weed together. We sometimes do each other's makeup. We like talk about our shows. We kiki, we watch YouTube videos together. Like we do nothing. <laughs> and then we go to the club and we get two drink tickets and a hundred good dollars and we do two numbers and we get our tips and we count them and sometimes in the basement. 
Sometimes we get a shot with our friends. Sometimes we get on a dragon we dip. You know what I mean? Like, and I just feel like I'm public enemy number one. Anybody in legislation who has like said they're pro queer, like they have let us all down in the last six weeks. Because as much as they have punched those bills, like Republicans have been writing these bills like fucking crazy and getting them and getting them approved like fucking crazy, like nobody's business. And there are no blue states right now who have like offered up bills to oppose that. To be like, hey, if you have trans kids, they can transition medically. And we like sanction it here in our state to take care of trans children. Nobody's being like, we're not gonna ban fucking drag shows in Illinois. We're not going to ban them in New York. You know what I mean? Like, nobody is like standing up in response. And so it also just calls to attention that like the people who call the queer community to vote for them every year and to stand up for them and to march for them and to rally for them and to spend money on them are literally unwilling and unmoved enough to not do anything of a similar vein. Because to me, if I'm AOC and I have, and I'm in Congress or wherever she does, I don't know, besides tweet, I'm like, do your fucking job, bitch. I'm like getting tired of it. Like I'm sick of seeing like tweets about how like drag queens are evil people. You've been a guest on Drag Race and I'm like, where's the bill proposal? Sister, what's going on? I wanna know. Because Mitch McConnell's hands are falling off of the bones and he's still being like, I'll sign that one. I'm like, I don't even know what happens in Congress. You know what I mean? I wear wigs. I do know what happens because like, you know, political science. But also like, I also am like, come on. I just find it to be a little ridiculous and I find it to be like laughable. Quite honest. This country is like a, like a shithole. Especially to be like marginalized inside of this like country is to like, it is it like third world down <laughs> like it's like literally like it's a third world country playing dress up because i can guarantee you republicans will be like you can't even be gay in syria i'm like you don't want us to be gay here so it's like i don't get it it's it's like ridiculous i refuse to ask my communities to bear the largest amount of responsibility to make things better I feel the exact same way with queer people right now as I felt with black people in 2020. We didn't create the problem. And so as soon as our capacity to educate is done, figure it the fuck out. If any part of you is aligned with queer people to not be like actively and adamantly supporting them right now and uplifting them and talking for them, not even with them, but like for them and like standing on good ground. If you know a gay person, you care about them, you should be like writing a post every day about how fucking brilliant and good they are as a human being to you and how important they are to you. I'm just throwing it out there, fuck Kim Reynolds. You don't have to put that in there, but like, fuck Kim. Open this entire documentary with this message. <laughs> fuck you, Kim Reynolds. <laughs> Isn't she like a pixie cut?